Hello everybody and welcome to my little corner of the loony bin where the walls are oh so soft and the jackets are nice and tight with rows of very fashionable buckles all the way down the back. Okay, it's that time again. Uh, time for me to play a duck like an accordion? <laughs> oh no, don't be ridiculous. You play a duck like a kazoo. <laughs> Sounds like a duck call. <laughs> duck calls. <laughs> we have a dynasty on them. <laughs> Call them duck commanders. <laughs> Not quite sure what we're commanding the ducks to do, though. I, sir, take umbrage to this entire situation. <laughs> uh, I amuse myself. <laughs> Seriously though, somebody needs to make a cartoon with Daffy Duck and and and, and that, those guys. That would be hilarious. Hey, Warner Brothers, you you you, you looking for ideas? I know a guy. <laughs> uh, I'm in rare form. No, but the time that it is is it's time to do the shading on the Baron. You know, we saw last time the beautiful, gorgeous. Fancy pantsy shading that happened over here on Clam Day Clankaroo. So now it's time to get the Baron the same treatment. So we're going to start with going to his color layer and we're duplicating it. Duplicate layer. And then we're going to go to. If, if, what was I naming these things? Shades. These going to be shades. It's a. It's. It's a shady operation. <laughs> I'm in rare form tonight. I don't know. It's nearly 10 o'clock at night right now. and <laughs> uh, I think I'm just a wee bit sleep tipsy. So. Which is weird. I'm usually up at 10. This is not abnormal. I'm usually not sitting down to work at this hour though. It's funny. Us artistical types, um, work odd hours sometimes. I know a lot of people like work through the middle of the night and they don't sleep like normal human beings. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes inspiration hits and you just have to go with it no matter what time it is. I need to darken this. I'm not even focused on what the heck I'm doing. Uh, brightness slash contrast. That's what I want. And I'm going to crank the contrast, no, not contrast, the brightness down to, what am I doing this for? Just type in 50, you idiot. N negative 50. N negative, a ne negative 50. Average 50, a negative, yes, okay. Very, very good, sir, very, very good. Turn the contrast down just a little bit, too, I think. Might make this a little bit uh, less odd. Okay, I'm happy with it. <coughs> it works for me. It likes for me, Doc. So, <clears throat> nah, put the mask, me, 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 everybody, everybody, a mask on, and then yeah, right. It's erase your time. And I use my eraser to do erase your. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. No, 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 da, 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 no. And it's all better. Da, 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 So, aside from feeling like an escapee from a loony bin right now, <laughs> the uh, ranch hand at the funny farm, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um... I don't really know <clears throat> what else to blab about. I could talk all about my wonderful process here, but I, I pretty much outlined that in the last one, so you get to just watch me do it again. It's redundant and repetitive, too. Hmm. Sir, I'm afraid I'm going to have to... I'm, sir, I'm afraid I'm going to have to report you to the... Report you to but for tired to uh, sir. I can't talk today. <laughs> I'm gonna try this again, <laughs> sir. We're gonna have to report you to the Department of Redundancy Department. 
because your commentary is both redundant and repetitive. And we've heard it before. Which is what makes it repetitive and redundant. And the Department of Redundancy Department has been notified of the redundancy of your redundant statements that are both repetitive and redundant. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Let's stop. Stop. No more. No, please. No more. Make it stop. Okay. I should do this late at night more often. <laughs> I feel like this might be a little bit more entertaining for you fellows. I don't know. Oh, goodness. Right, so... Ooh, mm, nope, that's not what I want. Is this what I want? Tell me what I want, what I really, really want. I don't know what I want, what I really, really want. Do any of us really know what we want? Do we really? I mean, we might think we know what we want, but do we really know what we want? Yeah, that is the question. I thought to be or not to be was the question. No, oh, shut up! No one asked you. Okay, let's see here. Don't expect to stay like this. I'm going to like get focused on what I'm doing, and <coughs> the comedic voices and commentary are going to dwindle. I guarantee it. <coughs> but it'll be fun in the meantime. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Give me a little something like this. Uh, no, it's just a little too small. Oop, there we go. That works. I'm just making it up. <coughs> I am making. I am making this up as I go along. I'm making up a silly, stupid little song. I'm making it up as I go along. I'm making it up verse by verse. There ain't no need to rehearse. I'm making up a silly, stupid little song. Yeah, I'm making up a silly, stupid little song. It may sound kind of strange and it may sound kind of wrong. It may sound like an opera singer scream, but you can't blame a guy for trying to sing. Yeah, I'm making up a silly, stupid little song. All right, everybody now, sing along. I'm making up a silly, stupid little song. So go ahead and feel free to sing a long. It doesn't matter if you don't know what words to say, cause I'm making it up as I go anyway. Yeah, I'm making a, a silly, stupid little song. You're welcome, folks. Take, take that one. That was a freebie. Download that one onto your iPad or iPod or phone and just play it. Make it a, make it your ringtone. Annoy everybody in the vicinity of your presence. Which, if you're me, your presence just annoys people anyway, so may as well capitalize on it, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. <coughs> what is wrong with me? Ask what's right, though. It's a shorter. Okay. Go here, go here. Blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm liking this for the most part. For the most part. I need a more shadow there. Shadow. Come with me into the shadows. Come with me, my children of the night. No. No. No, sir. No way. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, uh, but no thanks. I think I'll pass. Out. <laughs> no. Hey, look, goggles. Glass, look, I want to make it sort of shiny. Shiny. Gonna make it shiny. Put a sheen and shine it. Do, 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 do. Um, I think... <coughs> I think I'm gonna go ahead and, um, 
I'm gonna do his clothing a little differently than I did like Calamity's hat here and stuff because I'm gonna try and make it man my sweet spot is loud oh clickety clacking um I'm gonna try <coughs> <coughs> I'm okay. Don't worry about me. <clears throat> it was just my lung. Um, I'm going to try to make his clothes, actually purposefully make his clothing look a little shinier because it's supposed to be like a leather jacket. So we can give a little more of a sheen to it. Uh, we'll see how that looks. Ah, that's nice. A nice little even shadow there. Good, good. Scoop, scoop. Okay, and then give me flip it back around, make it a little bit bit bigger. There we go. Like it's like a little too much shadow there. I'm making noises. This is my process. You see, if you saw me doing this in public, you'd be thinking I was having a stay stroke or something. But no. No, this is just be me, me being me. To be fair, though, I typically don't go full-on nutball in public. Typically. I guess, uh, in a way, I am right now, because <laughs> this is the internet, folks. It's just bad public as it gets. Um, I'm crazy in public. Alright. No, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, let's go the other way. Like it was the program all out here. Alright. You know what? I enjoy doing silly cartoon voices <laughs> as you've probably guessed by now like I, I do voices for all of my own characters here uh Zeb Baron I do that voice for him and I do the voice for Calamity Kangaroo and I do the voice for the Professor Flatibus too um and I also like doing all kinds of other weird wacky cartoon voices <clears throat> but I've noticed something recently they don't really do cartoon voices so much anymore. Or at least, not, you know, I mean, they, they might still, but not as much as they used to. I've noticed a trend of just, like, giving cartoon characters these, like, normal, average voices. And it's it's like that in a lot of things. And, I don't, I mean, I, I guess the... The wacky, goofy, cartoony voices could be a little over the top sometimes, but, you know, depending on the cartoon, th that can work. I mean, like, Looney Tunes, for instance, always comes to mind. Like, that, uh, that's, that's, that's a wacky, goofy cartoon with wacky, goofy characters, so having them have wacky, goofy voices just kind of fits, you know. But, like, one of the things that comes to mind is the new DuckTales that's out. No, oh, here I go. I'm opening this... I'm opening this can of worms again. I wrote a, like, idea. Just getting my thoughts out kind of thing, right? A, a journal. No, like a, like a blog or a journal. Over a year ago, I think almost two years ago, when the first artwork for the new DuckTales came out, but, you know, we didn't have anything else other than that artwork. Um, and I was just weighing in, giving my two cents on it, and uh, it got me thinking about other trends in entertainment and things, and I just kind of used DuckTales as a uh, case study, I suppose. Uh to point out a lot of uh, things that I take issue with in cartoondom these days, or 
Not even necessarily things I take issue. It's issue. It's you. It's turned into a snake. No. Things that, uh, I, not necessarily things I take issue with, but things that, um, things that I, I don't understand, maybe, or that, um, <clears throat> I question, I guess would be the way to put it. I, like, decisions that I question, um, things like redesigns and stuff like that. And, um, <clears throat> I used DuckTales as kind of a jumping off point of that, but ultimately I, I got to uh, a, the point of the like, bigger trends, and like it was not really about DuckTales, but then, oh, about a year ago? Has it been that long? No, I think it's more like five or six months ago. Uh, a fellow who agrees perhaps with some of my uh assertions decided to disseminate my little uh dissertation as it were um as to back up his claims which hey like that that's kind of cool i that's that's um that's flattering that somebody was like hey you said it better than i can so i'm gonna use your thing as an example i mean that's 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 kind of that, that, that kind of um it, it validates not necessarily your viewpoint but like the, hey I I said what I said and I got the point across that I was trying to get across and like people understood what I was saying hey that's great I can communicate with people on some level at least maybe um so like that was kind of cool but then then the problem started happening because a lot of people came to because this 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 guy was not the nicest guy when sharing his opinions i suppose you could say even though i perhaps might agree with some of his opinions his um <coughs> method was very well yeah, let's say ham-fisted to be nice and, uh, th there was some rudeness that happened because I was away at the time. I was busy with other things in life, the universe and everything, 42. And, um, I didn't have time to reply to a year and a half old journal, which for those uninitiated, a journal on DA is basically like a blog post. Um, it's not like somebody got a hold of my diary and was, like, reading, oh, like, today I had a dream about this girl and, oh, no, <laughs> that's not what, that's not what the journal is, um, on that. So, but I didn't, I'd moved on, I'd moved past it, I'd said my piece, I was done. People started going off on me, and part of it was just kind of backlash from this other guy who had obviously, when posting that and linking it, was not being the most um, thoughtful person in doing towards the disseminate not disseminating uh, dissenting rather uh, opinions, and uh, so some of that backlash came on me. So I got this like inundation of people that were defending the new DuckTales, and I wanted to say right now, for the record, like, the new DuckTales is pretty good. I'm, I'm actually pleasantly surprised that it is as good as it is. I, I had very low expectations, as I do with most reboots, rehashes, things like that these days, and so I was very pleasantly surprised. That being said, art style is still not my favorite. I would have preferred them to not go changing things. Uh, if they didn't have to, if there was no reason to. Now, some of the people, the dissenting ideas on that, uh, had some very, very smart <clears throat> input as to why they thought that the changes had been made, why they thought even that those changes were necessary. And while I don't necessarily agree with that viewpoint, it was a very interesting conversation 
I learned a lot about why, about maybe the mind, a little bit more about the mindset behind it, so it's not such a mystery to me. Again, even though I don't necessarily agree with the mindset, I at least can understand it to some degree, and that's, that's something, you know. There's the, that's why you should sit and talk to people that you disagree with, because you never know when you might actually learn something. Um, oh, hang on, let's see. I uh, did shade, so this is highlight. Highlight. There we go. No, that's not how you spell highlight, but you know what? That's how, that's how I'm spelling it. That's my life. It's my life, man. Don't don't tell me how to be. Oof, that's that's way too dark. It's way too dark, man. It's like it's 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 like Christopher Nolan Batman, and I'm want like Adam West Batman here. What is this? Okay. Um. <laughs> so. <coughs> Add a new, no. add a layer mask, and we flip it, and we dunk it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <clears throat> but you know, I had some very interesting discussion with these folks. I really did, and you know, it was it was illuminating. It was illuminating, not only in understanding some of the thought press that, process that goes into these changes, but also in understanding some of my own thought processes and and being able to better understand and articulate why it is those things bother me, why it is that I feel that they're unnecessary and that they take away from things and all that. It was a very good discussion that I had with these people. They were very polite and cordial. Um, <coughs> this other fellow, however was not so nice and he was uh, he was bad mouthing a few people on my journal well I wouldn't have any of that I wish I'd gotten around to it sooner but like I said I got busy with other things and I didn't have time to worry about a uh, you know year and a half old article blog post thing that I wrote I didn't have time to worry about that or mess with that um so by the time I get back around to it, it's like a war zone in the comments, and I'm like, what the heck is going on here? And so I wrote a very stern um, reprimand to the person in question and said, hey, you know, like, I agree with you on most of these points, but man, the way you're going around about this is all wrong. And like the real thing that peeved me off is, <clears throat> Anywhere that I post my work or my thoughts or anything, whether it's uh, whether it's on DA or whether it's on Facebook or whether it's right here on the old YouTubes, these are my spaces, right? Not my space because that's dead now. But th these are my areas. They're like my, uh, for lack of a better term, they're like my storefront because, you know, this is the thing I'm selling is my art. Um, whether I'm actually selling it for money or just trying to gain an audience and get it out there, whatever the case may be. And then on top of it all, I, I, I just try to be a, a nice guy. And so I see that kind of attitude. I see that kind of, um, let's see, light is what I want. I see that kind of attitude. I see that kind of, uh, behavior in on my space in, in my places on my pages and things like that and I'm I'm not a happy camper with that I, you you don't get to do that you don't get away with that not on, not on my watch um, so I I don't want to say I laid into him but uh, I you know I have very stern like hey I agree with you but even so, you can't be treating people this way. Even if they disagree with me or you or anybody else, it doesn't matter. It just does not matter. You don't treat people this way. People need to be treated with you know, courtesy and respect and you need to listen to people. And the biggest thing was that I said was like, dude, you are doing more damage to our shared opinion here 
to, to the stance that we both kind of taken on this thing. You're doing more damage to it than every single one of the dissenting, dissenting comments down there in the commentary could ever do. Because, you know, you're making you're making <clears throat> yourself look bad and you're making me look bad by extension because I agree with you on a few points of, of, of this cartoon and, and the redesign and like I didn't even fully agree with him because he was all like it's garbage except he used words that were far worse than garbage you know and all this and I'm like it's actually not that bad I mean it's not my favorite thing and I really do think it would be better with the you know <coughs> established art style but all the same like <clears throat> I didn't agree with him I wasn't quite as vehement as he was that it was all just garbage either <coughs> and uh i don't know it was this mess and i didn't want to deal with it and uh so i finally managed <coughs> <coughs> pardon me <clears throat> i finally managed to damage control that <clears throat> to the point where everybody's you know happy and everybody's you know we've we've all learned something we're all like if we can if we can all come away just a little bit smarter and a little bit wiser than we were going in, then all is well. You know, mission achieved. But, man, it was difficult when they were... <clears throat> oh, man, it just... It got to be an issue. And I got to be this drudge every time I got on. I'm like, oh, what now? Like, what new duck... Tales Hades awaits me. <laughs> and so I, I neglected that site entirely for uh, the longest time, and I'm still getting back into the swing of things on there, uh, because on top of it all, I was still super busy, too, like I said. So that was, it was just this huge mess. But anyway. I say all that to say that I bring up DuckTales very trepidatiously now because that is a can of worms that I don't want to open. But that being said, I'm going to use it as an example here um, of another trend that I've noticed, and that's the trend that I was talking about before, that they don't do wacky cartoon, or not even just wacky, they don't do cartoon voices anymore. Uh, so often, there are so many cartoon characters I can think of that sound like a like a generic college age guy you know something in there um, <clears throat> they've done it with Sonic the Hedgehog they kind of did it with Huey Dewey and Louie in in DuckTales um, <clears throat> now there is perhaps an argument to be made that it does make them easier to understand so y you do have that going um, <clears throat> honestly, but, but, you know, you could scream nostalgia goggles and stuff like that, and, but that's not what I'm talking about, because even things that are brand new and only exist in, you know, today's cartoon landscape, like, uh, like, um, what was that show called? The Gravity Falls show. Um, that one. The, the 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 brother uh i'm blanking on his name i'm sure you're all yelling at me in the comments with you know caps lock what his name is right now uh but he he sounded too old to me honestly like he sounded like you know some college age guy it, it like it, he didn't sound like what were they supposed to be like 10 year olds like you know maybe early teens, something like that, I forget exactly, um, but, the, you know, they were kind of, like, in the, in that in-between space, so, I don't know, maybe, maybe Dipper, Dipper, that was his name, maybe he hit puberty earlier, I don't know, but, um, I, I don't know, it just always seemed kind of weird to me, it didn't sound, it's, it seemed like there was a guy delivering his dialogue that was not trying to do a voice for him. Now, 
I will say, though, because it was its own thing, and that's how it was and always was, I got used to it, and it stopped bugging me, okay? I'm not saying that it's wrong or terrible or bad. I'm just notice. I'm just observing a trend here where they don't do voices so much as just, like, get somebody to act it out. Yes, I mean, like, they're still acting, going, oh, I don't want to... <clears throat> I don't want to badmouth the actors, because they act, and they act well, but they're just not doing any kind of voices. They're just using their voice and acting. Um, and, I don't know, I, I think, and this is where I'm getting into conjecture here, I think some of that may have to do with a lot of movies um, that have come out in recent years because um, a lot of movies don't have voice actors. They have famous actors who then do the voices. Um, like, And even Pixar is guilty of this. And <laughs> I'm certainly not going to badmouth Pixar because you know, hey, whatever they're doing, it's it's working. <clears throat> they're one of the best uh, animation shops t around today, so I'm, I'm not going to say that they're wrong or that there's something terrible about it, because it's not, but it's also a big movie. Um, but so you get a lot of actors that aren't, that are just do using their own voice. Um... <clears throat> The difference there, I feel like, is that you've got a whole lot of actors who have varied voices, right? Um, like, there's a lot of variety of voices <clears throat> available to you to begin with. And a lot of times, like, a cartoon character's voice may actually be uh, based on the voice of a celebrity or something like that. For instance, um, Foghorn Leghorn, a lot of people don't know, was actually based on a radio character at the time, um, which was not somebody's normal voice. I mean, it was still a voice that was put on, but still. Um, I think... <clears throat> pardon me. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, but, you you know, any, any, time, any time you see Igor done like this, it's a parody of Peter Lore who played Igor in the original, um, uh, what was it, the uh, Universal uh, Frankenstein movie. I think that's the one he played in. That's the one everybody knows, anyway. But anyway, anytime you hear the Peter lore like that, that's, you know, that's an impression of a, <coughs> like, that can be taken to cartoonish levels, but that's an impression of an actual actor. But the thing is, like, a lot of the... Whoops. Oop, oop, oop. Didn't mean to do that. No, 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 no. Back up. Control minus. Thank you. Behave. Please. Please behave or do nothing to I'm in color dodge. I thought I was in lighten. What the heck, man? That was weird. Okay. <coughs> I think I must have hit something wrong. Anyhow, um... But, you know, we've got things like that. A lot of cartoon voices are based on impressions <coughs> of some actor. Like, the Good Feathers in, on Animaniacs. Um, Squit was... Squit, who, wanted, who always wanted to be a Good Feather, was an impression of Ray Liotta. Um, and then, of course... Pest, uh, Bobby was, was a Robert De Niro impression, and Pesto was a Joe Pesci impression. Um, so, you know, th th that's nothing new. Um, but I just, I feel like when you've got that pool to pull from, uh, it, it gives you more variety, I suppose, but then when you take it back down to, like, television animation... And, you know, they don't have <coughs> that kind of talent pool to pull from. If we're going to default to just somebody doing their normal voice, then you're, you're just going to get some normal guy doing his normal voice. And 
I don't know, a lot of times that comes off as underwhelming to me. Um, I don't know. I don't mean to be hypercritical. That's not my, that is not my intent here. <coughs> <coughs> mm, pardon me. Hang on, give me a moment. <clears throat> I'll probably insert some elevator music in here later. Royalty free, of course. <clears throat> I got copyright safe version of the girl from Ipanema or something. But anyway, um, it's just it's not even it's not even really a criticism per se. It's just a an observation that I have made that they tend to do that. And like I said, I think oh, I think that a lot of the uh, <clears throat> famous actors who have been in some in animated movies in recent years have kind of have set the precedent of voice actors not putting on a voice. And you know, when you've got <coughs> the likes <coughs> of Tom Hanks and uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor, <laughs> no, Tim Allen. Uh, when you've got the likes of them voicing like Buzz and Woody, it's not a problem because their voices fit, and you f you forget that it's them. Right? You forget that it's those actors, and it's just Buzz and Woody. You know, they have access to th those, and I'm not even going to say talent, they have access to that number of distinct voices. That there's no need to put on any voices because they actually have access to a number of distinct actual voices. One of the reasons that a lot of um, cartoons had voice actors that put on voices is because of budgetary reasons. Um... They didn't have money for a whole lot of actors. <coughs> and so they'd have one actor do a whole lot of roles. You know, look no further than Mel Blanc, right? You know, who did almost all of the Looney Tunes characters. Why? Because Leon Schlesinger was a cheapskate. <laughs> they, call, they called the, the animation department Termite Terrace for a reason, because it was in a building that was falling apart. Like, they had no budget. Or very little budget, anyway. I mean, obviously, they had some budget. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to make anything. But you know what I mean. And so they certainly didn't have the budget to get, you know, Humphrey Bogart and Audrey Hepburn and, um... Let's see, who else? James Cagney and Jimmy Stewart and all of the, you know, great actors of the day to come in and voice the Looney Tunes stuff. Like, they didn't have that kind of budget. That wasn't going to happen. For, for all Schlesinger knew, they made Mickey Mouse cartoons in their Warner Brothers. <clears throat> True story. So, you know, of course, they had to improvise. They had to get creative. And so they had one person do all those characters. But if you're going to have one person do all these characters, then they're going to have to put on voices to help differentiate the characters now, aren't they? Um, <coughs> so I suppose you could say that that was, you know, that maybe that was just a limitation of the time. And, you know, that may be true when we're talking about film animation, but, you know, TV animation still, you know, again, going to the Buzz Lightyear, and Woody uh, analogy when they did Buzz Lightyear of Star Command well this is a bad example but I'm gonna use it anyway when they did Buzz Lightyear of Star Command they got Patrick Warburton to do who is a great voice actor by the way uh, they got Patrick Warburton to do <clears throat> Buzz because they didn't think they'd be able to afford Tim <laughs> uh, Actually, turns out they could have afforded Tim, and Tim's like, why did you replace me? Because Tim, like, Toy Story was a step 
up for Tim Allen because before that it, he he was a television guy. Um, so he's like, I, you know, I did tool time all these years. I do I mean, like <laughs> t t I do TV. <laughs> I'm I'm not some high f I'm not I'm not like Tom Hanks who's a movie star, right? He was he was enough of an in between. He's like, guys, why didn't you just call me? I would have done it. And uh, but by then it was too late because they'd already replaced him, thinking that they weren't going to be able to afford him, which makes sense because in a lot of other instances that's the case. And so obviously, since you know. Again, if if they made a Toy Story show, they might be able to get Tim Allen because he has done TV before and since. They're not gonna get. They're not gonna be able to afford Tom Hanks for that, though, right? It's like that's not gonna happen. So they're gonna have to find a sound alike um, for Woody. You know, so it's the same like in TV animation, like the cartoons that you see on on television. Or, which is the equivalent of the shorts back in the day, as opposed to features. Um, you're 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 not gonna you're not gonna get those big names. And so, if you stick with the just hey, do this in your normal voice thing, you're really limiting yourself because you don't have as many unique voices to pull from, I guess, is, is what you could say. And I, I, I'm not saying that that doesn't exist at all. Uh, because there there are still, you know, wacky voices. Again, going back to DuckTales, in the same cartoon that gives the the, the nephews kind of more generic voices, you've still got Donald, who talks like Donald Duck and like let's be honest they couldn't that one they might even want to change because sometimes it's very hard to understand Donald Duck but they're not going to get away with changing Donald Duck's voice it's just not going to happen right it's such an integral part to the character you know and then you've got the the guy that does launch pad it's almost identical to Terry McGovern, who did Lunchbed before. I mean... And then, of course, another good point is, um... Doctor Who, who does, uh... Scrooge in that. I'm blanking on his name. I have a friend, Junon, who is going to just kill me for not being able to think of his name. David Tennant. There we go. I have redeemed myself in her eyes. She's a she's a big David Tennant fan. Anyway, um, he doesn't do a voice for Scrooge. Now, to be fair, he's got a natural Scottish accent, so at least he's got that going for him. But you know, I don't know. T David Tennant's voice is a little bit higher pitched, I think, than than Scrooge should be. Um. So he he took a little getting used to also again like, but he was close enough that once I got used to it wasn't a problem but it did take a little getting used to um, because he's not putting on a voice either so I don't so I just don't know it just seems like putting on a voice for cartoon characters or voice acting is not as big a thing as it once was. And, again, not even necessarily criticizing that, just just observing. I, I like the wacky cartoon voices. Some people don't, actually. Some people think they're stupid and have a problem with them. Uh, that, I don't, again, I don't know if that has anything to do with decisions that have been made or not, but, uh, like, there are some people who can't watch a Daffy Duck cartoon because of how Daffy Duck sounds! Um, my mom is a good example. My mom does not care for Daffy Duck, because she finds him annoying, you know, and there are some 
cartoon character voices that can be annoying, especially if you're exposed to them for extended periods of time. But that's just that's just a matter of picking the right voice for your characters. Like if you want, if you have a character that you want to be annoying, that you want everyone in the audience to just want to punch him in the face, then an annoying voice is great for that character, obviously. But you also want to be, you know, mindful of your audience and not put them on the screen for too long, right? Just long enough to get the point across and make the audience want to punch them in the face and get the idea across that these are... This is a very annoying character and you're not supposed to like them. Um, but not long enough to make the audience like, ugh, I can't stand this and change the channel. Like, you gotta know what you're doing. And if you have a main character that the audience is supposed to like and supposed to identify with and supposed to, you know, <coughs> be into and get there with, Oh no, the sirens. They're coming to take me away! <laughs> they get where they're going on time. Um, but... I, uh... I, yeah, yeah, you were saying. <laughs> oh yeah, but if you've got a main character that you want people to like, then you got to be very selective when you're picking out a voice for that character because you don't want one that's annoying or adver aggravating or irritating or grating because then you're going to do yourself a disservice and you're going to set yourself back rather than do yourself any favors. Um, and then again, you know, that might also feed into the no doing, into the no cartoon voices kind of mentality is like, okay, if, if it's just kind of a generic guy it's just some generic dude's voice like it's not going to be particularly noteworthy or memorable perhaps but at the same time it's not going to bother anybody so you've got that going for you so you know maybe that's part of the thought process there i don't know i'm just spitballing here at this point because i'm sitting here and i'm drawing this thing i'm not even drawing anymore i'm coloring it i'm not even coloring i'm shading this thing and i need to have something to talk about and this is what popped into my brain box because I started this whole thing out by doing really silly stupid voices. Oh, I miss that. I think I think there's a place for both. Like I think there's a time when you could have somebody that just has a more or less normal voice. Absolutely. Uh, and I think there's times when uh, you want that sort of over-the-top cartoonish voice, and there's times when you want to find something in between. Um, just just depends on what what your character is, what what uh, what what the character's in, what you're trying to do. It's another thing. Like I brought, I mentioned <coughs> Pixar over-the-top. Like, if they'd given Woody like this over-the-top cowboy accent, it wouldn't have played as well. Because, <clears throat> while that movie has many comedic elements in it, uh, it also has some dramatic elements of it and some heartfelt elements in it. And if Woody always talked like this, it'd be very difficult to take him seriously. And it would be very difficult to take the scenes parts of that movie that are meant to take be taken seriously seriously so like tom hanks is good because he's got sort of like a he's got the sort of like down home uh he doesn't have a country accent but he does have a, a voice that seems very fitting of a cowboy but at the same time has a certain earnesty and genuineness to it that <clears throat> made it work well for that movie and the subsequent movies as well um so they you know, they did a fantastic job casting him. So so part of it is you know what are you trying to do <coughs> with your cartoon or with your with your animation? What is the purpose of it? Is it is it pure comedy? Is it or do you want like some more heartfelt drama mixed in with your comedy? Like what are you going for? Um, like again. 
Gravity Falls, I mentioned before, is a good example, because that was a show that sort of walked the line between comedy and like more serious stuff, and so having Dipper have a more just normal voice kind of worked. But at the same time, you had other characters that had ridiculous, goofy, cartoony voices too, so I don't know. <clears throat> Again, not, not questioning the decisions there, per se, because that worked. But elsewhere, like it, it works in varying degrees, I guess is the way to say it. I wouldn't say that it does, there's any scenario where it doesn't work. Well, I don't know. No, no, I wouldn't say that. I was thinking about Sonic and Roger Craig Smith, and he's kind of hard to get used to. But I've seen Promise with him when he goes up into his higher register he sounds a lot more <clears throat> like sonic sounds i guess um <coughs> when he like when when he raises his voice up into a higher register it sounds better um so it makes me think that he's capable of it and over time he has gotten better his material not always great but <coughs> His delivery, you know, he, he's, he's obviously giving them what they want. Like, he's doing that much. Um, so, I, I, don't, I don't think it's really fair f to criticize him so much as maybe the direction that he's been given. But that is a whole other ball of wax, and I'm not going to get into that because you've got the... You've got the uh, cartoon fandom, <coughs> which is, like, what I'm speaking to at the moment. But then you've got the Sonic fandom, and that's a, ooh, another beast that um, <coughs> I don't want to bait. So, I've already put a couple of, like, Sonic-related things on this channel. I like Sonic the Hedgehog, as I like many cartoon things. Um, <coughs> Ironically, I like Sonic the Hedgehog because it does some things that aren't particularly cartoony. Um, it, I mean, it is cartoony, but it's capable of doing other things. <clears throat> and I think that's that's kind of cool. <clears throat> he hasn't done a lot of that recently. It's all been a lot more just like Saturday morning goofiness, comedy kind of stuff than anything deeper. Um, and hey, that's that's fun too. I mean, obviously. Look at what I'm doing here. Look, you know, if you've read my cartoon, my cartoons, any at all, you know that like that fun, silly, Saturday, wacky, zany Saturday morning cartoon kind of thing is something that I like too. So, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna say that that's terrible, but um, it is, it is missing the the novelty, I suppose you could say that originally drew me to the series and its capacity to do cartoony and serious action type stuff and do it at the same time. Like that's that's a very that's a very hard uh I feel like that's that's a very hard tightrope to walk. Um so much so that that particular series has had trouble walking that tightrope in the past, and I has multiple times uh, on both ends of that tightrope, going going too far one way or the other. Um, the fact that it even attempts to walk that tightrope is noteworthy, in in my opinion. But uh, most of you. Well, no, maybe not all of you, but a lot of you that are here probably don't want to listen to me talk about Sonic the Hedgehog because you probably don't care. But Sonic the Hedgehog is a cartoon <coughs> that I like. It is a video game character, yes, but that doesn't change that he's an animated cartoony character that I like. Just like all, oh, so many more, oh, so many more that I like. Looney Tune for various reasons, you know, like I said, I like Sonic for particular reasons, just like I like 
Looney Tunes for particular reasons, or Animaniacs for particular reasons, you know, there's, there's you know, various reasons that you could like, or dislike for that matter, something. Um, and then there are some things that you're going to like, and this is important too, is prioritizing. There are some things that you're going to like more than other things. There are some things that are going to be more important to you than other things. Um, for instance, you know, you're, you're going to... About that. Not for instance. I had the. It went away. Whatever I had, it went away. But the point is, um, there's a point. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's a point to any of this. I am just rambling on like a rambling rambler that rambles. Rambler man. Song, isn't it? I think that's a song. Rambler man. I want to say that's a song. Like a kind of a like. Whoop! Nope! Nope! Dang it! <clears throat> I'll say that's like a um, like a road trip kind of song. Ah, uh, road trips. Now there, there is a there's a topic we can talk about. Man, I could go for a good road trip. <laughs> It's one of one of the reasons I'm looking forward to maybe doing some out of out of state or at least out of city conventions. Just get out and travel a bit. It's fun. I was watching television. Wow, you were white man. You were watching television? No. You do that? No. I was watching television. Um, actually, you know what? Yeah, okay. Uh, I was, but yeah, I was watching television the other night, I think it was. Uh, it was a week or so ago, something. Don't know, don't remember what the uh, channel was, but I do remember that it was some kind of music channel. And they were running an old, uh, Eagles concert. And for those of you... First of you young whippersnappers out there who aren't familiar with who, who, what the Eagles are, they aren't just our national bird. <laughs> um, they're a rock band. Um, from the 70s or 80s? I don't actually know. I, they've been around for a long time, so saying they're from a decade is hard to do anyway because they're um, they've been around for multiple decades but they're before my time really um but that doesn't mean i can't still appreciate something that was from before my time um which i can and their music is basically a road trip waiting to happen like, I can't hear any of their music without thinking, like, Road Trip. And I don't know if maybe my parents used to play it on the radio whenever we went on Road Trips. Because I remember when I was little, we didn't listen to the radio much. Unless we were in the car. on, And even then, like, just driving to the store or whatever, we didn't really listen to the radio much either. But on road trips, like, you know, long, boring highway road trips, the radio was the entertainment. Because we didn't have any of your fancy uh, smartphones or tablets or anything like that to keep us busy. No, we had the radio, and that was it. So, <clears throat> I don't know if maybe had a tape that they played or what like I don't remember specifically so maybe there's an influence there but all I know is anytime I hear the Eagles I think road trip and uh, yeah, no. so I saw that the other night I wasn't even really watching it it's just uh, watching something else I don't remember even what it was but it's what came on afterwards and 
I just left it on. It's, it's good music, and I like it. And so, but it made me want to go on a road trip. It made me want to go see the see the country, see the world. Even well, you can't really see the world on a road trip unless you've got a really fancy car that can turn into a boat, <laughs> like some sort of James Bond thing. Um, but um, still, though, you know, it, 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 that, that kind of wanderlust sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm really hoping that I can make the travel arrangements that I need to make to be able to make that a viable option. Um, because being able to just get out there and get, get to bigger conventions and get my stuff out there more. <clears throat> like, I got invited to the uh, to one in New Mexico. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. That is so pretty. <laughs> I like it. But anyway, so we went from here. Here was the flats, and then we put some shading on, and then we put some highlights on, and we got that. <laughs> Look how nice that is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but enough of that. We're, we're done here. But anyway, I'm going to finish my statement of... I got invited to the... Uh, to a couple of New Mexico ones. Uh this year, but I wasn't able to do it because it was too short notice and I wasn't able to make the uh, travel arrangements that would have been necessary, but like, they got a hold of me and they're like, hey, we've heard great things about you, blah, 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 it's like, don't know who they've been talking to, but like, maybe they've been talking to the, um, to the people, the, uh, the con people here in town, I don't know, but that's pretty cool that I've got people reaching out to me and like, hey, we want you at our thing. Like, that's... <laughs> it's it's kind of humbling, really. But it's cool. <laughs> I felt, I felt, felt kind of bad having to say, well, I can't really do it this year because I don't have the... I, I don't have the transportation arrangements and I can't. Like, I can't do it because <clears throat> they were so nice <clears throat> about that they said such nice things but at the same time like, eh, you know but i was like hey <clears throat> keep me in the loop because i'm looking to do some out of state stuff next year and it's like you look as soon as you have like dates down and can send me the the paperwork do it because i i am on board so that'll that'll be that'll be fun that'll, i'm looking forward to that I'm looking forward to this convention season, being able to sell these and get these out there. Because, I mean, all you guys <clears throat> out there that are listening to this right now, obviously follow me online in some respect. And so you've seen these things, but uh, there are people who don't. Um, <clears throat> and I'll be able to, to share this with them that way. Um, and then, you know, more people will be able to see it, and more people will be able to enjoy it, and hopefully laugh at it, and, you know, you know, maybe my work can brighten a few other people's days, and really, that's, that's the best I can hope for. It's just to make somebody chuckle and make their day a little bit, a little bit nicer. And on that note, I'm going to sign off. You guys just have a wonderful, phantasmagorical, wondrous, absolutely beautiful, hyper, hyper beautiful, whatever. <laughs> have a good day. <laughs> have a nice day, sir. <laughs> And or ma'am. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, I'm leaving now. It's, 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 I don't know if you can see this, but it's 11 o'clock down there in the corner, and I have to sleep. <laughs> Goodbye.